Well, howdy, folks. It's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here, and I'm doing a electronic and mechanical diagnosis on a 2003 Hyundai Accent. And I'd like to use this opportunity to show you why you can't always trust computer diagnostics. So the story behind this 2003 Hyundai Accent with a 1.6 liter dual overhead cam engine is that the owner took it to O'Reilly's or AutoZone because her check engine light was on and it showed that she had a bad map sensor. So ultimately, honestly, how exactly do you know if you have a bad map sensor? A lot of times codes that come up, they're just generic codes and they'll tell you one thing, but sometimes there can be an underlying issue. And so it definitely is worth the time and money to go in and have somebody do a full diagnostics before you start swapping out sensors or gaskets or doing anything like that. So when it came to me, I went ahead and put the computer on it. And that's what we're gonna do here. Turn my computer on. And I'm gonna plug it into the port, to my OBD2 port, which is gonna be right underneath here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick the key in the ignition Turn it on and let it read. Let's see, what do we got going on here? Unable to establish communication, verify the connection. All right, so what's interesting is in the beginning, we had a map sensor code. Now we have an air temperature sensor code. And the reason why that's interesting is because on this vehicle, the idle air, the intake air temperature sensor and the map sensor, they're built into one sensor. So I find it interesting that one second we get a map sensor code and then the next sense, uh, second, we get an intake air temperature sensor code. So I'm going to pause it real quick, and I'll be right back. Alrighty then. So now that I'm back, let's just recap real quick. We've got a map sensor code, cleared that code out to see what would happen, drove it, came back. Now we've got an intake air temperature sensor code. Says the circuit is low, and it said the same thing for the map sensor. But how do we really know that that's a problem. The MAP sensor and the intake air temperature sensor read both the manifold absolute pressure or the vacuum pressure inside of the uh, engine as well as, well, the air temperature as well. So if you have the right computer, you can do what's called live data diagnostics by turning the vehicle on, going to live data, And now we have real-time live data of what's happening with certain sensors within the engine as it's running. Um, there's our map sensor right there. There's our engine RPM. So we're at 827 RPMs, and that's consistent with the gauge. Okay, if you raise it up. See my computer's doing here. Even my computer's acting a little funny. There we go. So going back to live data. Again, engine RPM 796, 793. That's consistent with, with what's on the gauge. Let's raise it up to 
2,000 RPMs. Okay, that's 2,000, a little over. And again, that's consistent with what's on the gauge. So we know everything is working here. So the issue is with our intake air temperature sensor, which even though it basically says it's not working, per the live data, it does show that it's working at 91 degrees Fahrenheit. It also shows here that our MAP sensor is working. Let's go ahead and live data this by graphing it and see what the graph shows us. Is it dead? No, it's not. Now, if you notice, as I give it the gas, it goes up and down. But the question is, is, is that within the parameters? I'll tell you right now, 8 inches, or 8 inches HG, as you can see there, HG is the periodic symbol uh, for mercury. So that's 8 inches of mercury being pulled through there, so to speak. I'm going to tell you right now, that is not the amount of pressure that should be in this engine that's extremely low but the question is is how do we determine whether or not this is an actual sensor issue or a mechanical issue there's a lot of things that that can cause manifold absolute pressure to be low anything from the sensor just not reading right to timing not being right valves being stuck open valves being burnt all kinds of issues so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and look at the mechanical gauge and hook that up to the engine Okay, so now that I'm back, let's go ahead and figure out whether or not we have an electronic issue with the sensor or whether or not we have an actual mechanical issue that's causing there to be low vacuum pressure within this engine. It could be anything from, again, bad timing, uh, valves could be stuck or burnt, it could be an issue with your uh, throttle body gasket, it could be an issue with your intake gasket. So what's the best way to eliminate this? First thing to do is to get you a mechanical vacuum gauge and go ahead and hook that up to the engine. Now, where I've hooked mine up is through the PCV valve port right here on the intake. So I've got that hooked up and that's gonna tell me what the true value of manifold pressure is inside of this engine separate from what the computer or the sensor is telling me. So let's go ahead and get our car started again. Alrighty. So I've got the car in the on position. And now we're linked. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the car. I'm going to go back to my live data. And I'm going to go and I'm going to check my map sensor. Now again, my map sensor shows 9 inches. That's, that's per, the, per the sensor per what the computer is reading. But is that what my mechanical gauge is reading? Let's take a look. So at idle, here is my mechanical vacuum gauge that I have hooked up to my engine. And at idle, my mechanical vacuum gauge is actually shown to be around 17 inches of mercury versus what the computer is showing 8 inches of mercury okay so that makes you go what the heck's going on there well what that basically tells me is that there's nothing mechanically wrong and that the absolute pressure inside of the engine is actually where it needs to be and that it's the actual map sensor that is not reading correctly And again, our intake air temperature sensor is reading correctly, even though we have a code that says it is not working correctly. Now on this vehicle, your map sensor is gonna be right here. And both the map 
and the in, in, intake air temperature sensor is built into this sucker right here. But since the mechanical gauge is actually telling us everything is okay and we're and we're within normal parameters, we are not going to pay attention to this at all and we are not going to do any further diagnosis. There's no need to check engine compression, fuel pressure or anything like that. We now know mechanically everything is good electronically it's not good the best way to fix this issue is to go ahead and replace this sensor possibly clean it out and see what happens so there you go folks there's a good example as to why you can't always trust your check engine lights and your computers and why it makes sense to go ahead and do mechanical and computer diagnostics as well as visual inspections so the fix for this car is going to be a new map sensor all right everybody well this is matthew your friendly neighborhood technician thanks for supporting me please like subscribe and share the knowledge i am signing off